chatting with the management we have with us Ms. Anand Deshpande, uh, the founder, the MD uh, and CEO of uh, Persistent Systems who joins us on the line. Hi, Mr. Deshpande. Thanks so much uh, for joining in. Um, I was going through a couple of uh, notes and in fact, uh, your revenue growth was seen at around 10 to around 12% uh, for FI16. I think in the first half of the year, you've done around 8.5%. So that means the asking rate for the second half is around 11, 11.5%. Do you maintain that guidance and how exactly will you achieve it? Uh, yes, uh, we are maintaining the guidance at this moment. We are seeing good traction in two or three different areas. One set around the sell with partnerships that we have set up. Second thing is around the uh, enterprise digital transformation and some of the work that we have built out and the products that are coming in. And the pipeline for takeovers of end of line products is also fairly good. And we expect some of those to be also providing revenues for the second half of the year. Okay. What percentage or what portion of your guidance of 10 to 12 percent will be courtesy the acquisitions that you've done? Can you break up your full year growth into organic as well as the inorganic part? Um, it's a little tricky to do that on the specific things, but uh, uh, we do expect some of the ones that we have done. Uh, we have done three acquisitions in the last few months. Um, they will generate revenues in different buckets. And uh, that should help. Uh, I, I would not say it's a very substantial percentage because all these numbers are fairly small in terms of the size of the acquisition. But the acquisitions have a reason why they have been done and there is a access to newer customers and all of those things that is happening through that. So the question is that, uh, you know, a lot of the acquisitions, not all attributed to the acquisition, but the acquisition gives us an entry into a customer base that we are trying to focus on. All right, uh, Mr. Deshpande, you have done uh, three acquisitions uh, recently, as you mentioned, uh, but you are sitting on quite a big uh, cash pile, so you're open to doing more acquisitions. Can we see another one coming in uh, before the end of this uh, fiscal? Um, you see, all of these things can happen. We are looking at several deals at this moment. One of the things that we have had a focus on is to acquire uh, products that are not strategic to our large ISV customers okay. and we are keen to use that as a method for us to enhance our relationships with some of the companies that we work and do business there and some of those we could get uh, slightly different kinds of deals by putting cash as part of the agreement and uh, we have been considering or talking to some of them in that context. Could you close any of them anytime soon? <laughs> It's always a hard question to answer like that. We have about a half a dozen discussions going on, so uh, we hope to close some of them, but these things have a tendency of uh, being very close, but still far till it's signed, you know? So I don't want to say anything about when they will close. Um, and many of these deals, since they are with large companies who have to make a decision on whether they want to outsource or maybe put that thing into a um, strategic partnership with us. Sometimes they have an option of doing nothing at all. So that's the risk that there is. Okay. But overall, uh, it's fairly optimistic. The pipeline is good on some of these things. Okay. And many of them are not very expensive from the context of pushing cost cash out. They do have a little three, six month time period when we are investing and in taking over. There is double, uh, you know, expenses because we are uh, have to invest in sure. training the people and getting them ready before they can start mm -hmm. to build. So most of that is of that kind. So that has a little bit of a margin pressure, but overall uh, they should be very accretive within a 12 month period. Okay, so not a significant cash outflow, but margins could be um, hit, at least on a few of these deals initially. What about the IP business? Because that's been giving you negative growth for the last many quarters. When will it bounce back? What's the outlook looking for Q3 as well as Q4? Right, so the Epona acquisition that we did is an IP deal, and, and that should contribute to that. And that bucket, we have one more product that we have been working with for a while that we should be launching in Q1 of the calendar year. Mm. So that should have some impact at the Q4 for us, but it will be a next year business. And some of the ones that we are uh, talking about, which I mentioned where we are taking on end of life or non-strategic products, 
they are all related to IP related business as well. All right, uh, Mr. Deshpande, thanks so much for stopping by, giving us uh, all that uh, commentary. Confident management, second half of the year expects to be better than the first half. Uh, by the way, just pull up uh, or the Nifty. We're talking about Lupin doing well. Pull up HCL Tech. There's some defensive buying, I think, today because HCL Tech suddenly has moved to the high point of the day. If we just pull up uh, intraday chart, we'll see the stock is high with a gain of around a percent. Half a percent of that gain has come in the last 10 to around 